today we are talking about unemployment and the U.S. economy. Joining us today to weigh in on the president's job bill is Professor Carl Petrick, assistant professor of economics from Western New England University. We have former representative Mary Rogness from Longmeadow, and we have Michael Maddy, the president of St. Germain Investment Management. Thank you all so much again for being here. Um, I wanted to ask you, what did you, what were your viewpoints of how the stock market reacted when the president made his announcement of spill? Well, I think you know the stock market reaction was not one of shock or surprise because nothing that he was talking about was really shock or surprise, uh, as typically happens in a lot of political speeches. A lot of things are leaked beforehand, and you've got a pretty good idea what the package is going to look like by the time it actually happens. And most people on Wall Street are not sitting there waiting for the actual delivery of it. They were reacting a day or two or three beforehand when they saw what the ideas that were being kicked around about it. Now, I just remember there was a little bit of uncertainty there, but it was also around the time Irene had just uh, pulled through, so it was, I don't know if it was a mix between the hurricane slash tropical storm and also the announcement, but it seemed like some people were shifting their money around and things were a little uneasy for a little while, a little time there. Yeah, I think that a lot of that was at the time period was also related to an awful lot of events that were going on in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, potential Greece default, and people were right. getting increasingly worried about Italy and what may happen within Italy and Spain. And you know, so it's a, it's not just a domestic U.S. event. We've also got you know big political problems going on everywhere in the world at the moment. In all honesty, right? It wasn't something Obama needed to say. Oh man, <laughs> <laughs> that, that <laughs> where did I go wrong? <laughs> yeah, and that was, that was really driving it. Even even up to today, uh, really, the markets really have their eyes on what's happening in Europe. Um, so when the jobs bill came out, as you're right, nothing was changed. Actually, the numbers were a little bit higher than, than what had been floated. But apart from that, million. yeah, billion, yeah, whatever, yeah, a million billion, among <laughs> friends, you know. Um, but it, it really was what was happening in, in Europe. And this morning, for example, it was announced that the U.S. Fed, Federal Reserve, is loaning dollars to the European European commercial banks as a way of helping them with the liquidity crisis. Basically, three month loans through the European Central Bank, which that will then lend out to your, some of the big European banks. Mm -hmm. Big European bank shares shot up after being really dampened down. So again, the market is still reacting largely to what's happening in Europe because what's happening here, it's like, well, we've already, adjust, or we've already, we've already kind of adjusted to that. So unless you get new news, there's not a whole lot dri driving it domestically right now. Okay, and what about the reasons for keeping interest rates low? Uh, we were talking uh, in the break about how the Federal Reserve is going to be keeping interest rates low, or at least it plans to, until 2013, because that's when it anticipates the weak economy to continue, if, if not there, even farther. Um, what do you think about that? I mean, just for people hearing that, oh man, it anticipates a weak economy through 2013, or is that actually optimistic? Um, I think it's realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl was talking about the number of jobs that need to be created. Uh, I mean, you're not going to do that overnight. Um, and even if you were to start a good high job lead month creation, it's still going to take a while to work the unemployment rate down. So it's going to take the economy a while to recover no matter what you do. So I think, the, again, the Federal Reserve is just sitting back and, and adding some reality to the situation. Okay. Um, we talk about workers who have, you know, sort of or non-workers who have given up trying mm. and they're not included in the unemployment rates. Oh, yeah. What kind of news do they need to hear to at least get back in line? You know, what is it? Is it, is it a huge spike in the stock market? What, what is it that people need? Stock market won't help them. Yeah. About 14 million unemployed, uh, 8.6 million underemployed who aren't included as unemployed, people mm -hmm. who are part-time with like full-time jobs. Uh, two million who are all of us marginally attached <laughs> to, to the to labor force, which means they have looked for a job, but not last not in the last four weeks. Um, a lot of them, what they need to hear is that there's additional hiring. And they'll re-enter the job market, which paradoxically will actually increase the unemployment rate because they'll be counted mm -hmm. for a, you know. So initially, you might see this little spike, but it's actually good news because it's people re-entering the labor market because they're feeling optimistic about the chance of getting a job. You know, there's, so ma there's only so many rejection letters you get before you stop trying. And that's a lot of the people that you're catching that are, you know, not counted as unemployed, but are actually unemployed. Mm -hmm. um, that's a really frustrating position to be in. And very, uh, very easy. It's just if the jobs are there, they will, they will come hire them. There's about officially four, worker, four, four potential workers for every job. Right. If you count up all the underemployed, marginally employed, 
unemployed but not counted as unemployed and various other things. It's more like eight workers to each job. Wow that's actually being advertised. So it's again a lot of job creation that's actually needed in, in order to, to really dent those numbers and get consumer spending. Okay, a lot of job creation that the job bill it's the biggest does, thing or not, does not cover, exactly. That's my feeling listening to that. All these people need work and we're gonna pay for schools mm -hmm. to be built when our state has done a pretty good job of taking care of those needs. There are states that haven't and I would hate to see the federal money going to the grasshopper states that have spent too much and can't do the jobs that are the, really the responsibility of the state. Yeah, I mean, our state is actually in pretty good financial standing, actually. We've got money in the rainy day fund we didn't have before. You know, we seem to be in a pretty good hold. Like, how would, you know, Massachusetts react to this type of money? I mean, how do you think that that would impact us here? It will help in the sense that it's money that's going to states is actually money to keep people who are employed already in, still in jobs like firemen, policemen, right. teachers. And that would at least have the effect of not increasing that employment numbers. But you're right, Massachusetts were below the national average in unemployment. We're way below the national average in terms of uninsured uh, people for good reason. Mm -hmm. Sorry Mitt Romney, it was your idea. Um, you're blaming Mitt for a No, I think program. it was a great idea. I just feel bad for him because he, he has to run from himself for the entire Republican nomination. Um, in a better position in a lot of ways. More money in the rainy day fund. Um, but there are other states out there that really are, are in much worse shape for various reasons. It wasn't all frivolous spending. Mm -hmm. um, we could, it certainly would help us in terms of keeping employment st stable. Uh, but it could help other states more who really need the impetus. Okay, very good. Carl Petrick, Mary Rogness, and Michael Maddy, I want to thank you all so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. And you w had some uh, great opinions and information to add into this topic. So thank you so much. And next, Search Smart. The next part of our program will include advice to find the job you're looking for as talks of creating new jobs continue.